Welcome to the Humanize podcast, all about personalizing your health. I am your host, Rebecca Kelly, and today we'll be discussing menopause and food choices with author Dr. Anna Kabeca of the new book, Menu Pause. Uh, before I inter- introduce Dr. Kabeca, I want to remind everyone to subscribe and get all of the other varieties of casts in audio, video, and transcription at humanizehealth.com. I'd also like to thank our lead sponsor, Village Green Apothecary at myvillagegreen.com. Uh, Dr. Anna Kabeca, Becca is a triple board certified and fellow of gynecology and obstetrics, integrative medicine, and anti-aging and regenerative medicine. Nationally known as the girlfriend doctor, Dr. Anna is a passionate health advocate for women, helping them to truly thrive in body, mind, and spirit. She's the author of two highly acclaimed books, creator of several popular virtual transformation programs, creator of several top selling health products, and is sought after lecturer throughout the world. World. Dr. Kabeca, thanks for being here with us. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks for having me. So we used to hear that menopause was a drop in estrogen and would be corrected by taking estrogen. Um, but that's a real simplified description, right? So what's really going on in menopause? Yeah, it's a really big transition in our hormones. And, and this, we used to say, okay, menopause age 52, if you're a non-smoker, 42 for smokers, big red flag there, but 52 and, you know, one to two years, right? Really it's 10 to 15 years of perimenopause symptoms that women can experience and sometimes longer. And what's happening, you know, to simplify it, I think estrogen gets a really bad rap in so many ways. And um, we really have to look at what, you know, where is estrogen coming from? And so estrogen is produced downstream from our main hormone, which is progesterone. And that is a pro-gestation, life-giving hormone. It's essential for good hair, good skin, good bones, healthy breast. I mean, all these important things. And from there we make DHEA, which is our adrenal hormone, and then estrogen downstream, estrogen and testosterone. So when we're stressed and we're worn out, I mean, just transition in life. And if you're like me, you're going through menopause with teenagers in the house. That's a cruel joke of nature too, in and of itself, but you know, there's stress, there's stress going on and that depletes your hormones even more. And those estrogen and testosterone, those are reproductive hormones. Those are the hormones that you know, make us want sex, feel sexy and are, are, are really important. And I, I do, I am a fan of bioidentical hormone replacement, menopause and beyond in very natural, you know, supportive ways in, in healthy and in healthy administered in healthy ways. So the way we take it makes a difference. So while it's gotten a bad rap, what we really need to address is progesterone and adrenal, adrenal. So addressing our stress And Rebecca, when I wrote my first book, The Hormone Fix, as I lived through my own analysis, I say it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. And the major hormones that we really deal with, as much as attentions on estrogen, are really cortisol, that stress hormone, insulin, because we get more insulin resistant as we get older, and oxytocin, the hormone of love, bonding, and connection. So those three hormones, when we balance that, our other hormones play better together. I love that. What a great way of describing what's an entire cascade, right? And what happens yes. in our lives. Like I could see every time you mentioned a different hormone and what it does, I could see it in my life, right? So I was like, oh yeah, that's right. That's right. And then the oxytocin, like uh, love that one, right? Like I was told, and I don't know if this is true, that just touching like a woman can touch her hair and that releases oxytocin. So sometimes I just do that and it does feel really good. <laughs> A hug even it, better it's so though. Good. It's so good. And you just think it, you know, a head massage. Why do we love to get our hair washed? A facial, a body massage, laughter, funny movies, sex. I mean, all of these things increase oxytocin. But you know, those little those head massages, I love that. I have a hack for that. Do you want my hack? I do. Yes. Bring it. So in the, uh, we have horses here in, in Dallas, Texas, my daughter does rodeo and, you know, hair, hair is a really big thing. And I had lost a ton of hair after I'd had her and my and plus was so stressed. I mean, I had hair loss to here, Rebecca, halfway oh. like male pattern baldness. So That's a whole nother story, oh. but so healing my hormones really made a difference. But anyway, in the horse world, we have this $1 horse comb. 
and you, and it's nice, sharp, sharpish edges. And you just run that in your head and you feel that. And it's just so good. That's my $1 hair hack. <laughs> Can you start putting it up on dranna.com? <laughs> <laughs> I Give think that's great. I'll do that. my $1 hair hack. <laughs> I love that. So um, do people underestimate the impact of food though? Because we talk about hormones cascades, right? Um, but yes. food choices, I mean, you can actually make a choice every time you have a meal, right? What you're putting yes. in your body. So how does that impact menopause? Like what food choices should we be making? And of course, referencing your new book, Menu Pause, right? Like I'm assuming there's some hints that are going on there. But what, <laughs> what do you think um, we should be doing? Yeah, there's definitely certain foods that we have to pause in menopause. We're not designed for uh, carbohydrates, higher carbohydrate diets anymore. So those beautiful fruit smoothies that we've loved, I mean, have them on your feast day. I mean, enjoy those, though, and, but we'll switch to the lower glycemic ones. I mean, it really makes a huge difference because we're becoming more insulin resistant. The more insulin resistant we are, the higher our risk of diabetes, the higher our risk of dementia, Alzheimer's and the degenerative joints. I mean, just terrible. So we don't want to go there. We want to maintain a really highly sensitive um, response to blood sugar. And we have to do that through changing our food choices. Absolutely. Through and through intermittent fasting. And plus the way we nourish our body changes our physiology. It affects these other hormones. So, you know, keeping blood sugar nice and stable, we need high quality proteins and clean fats and to out, you know, to support our gut bacteria our microbiome and our physiology to address our high stress cortisol hormone. We need the alkalinizing foods, the low carbohydrate, dark green leafies that are high in fiber. We need the herbs and spices like cinnamon, turmeric, cumin. I mean, all these worldwide spike garlic. Oh my gosh. So good. And you think like where, whoever would want to eat garlic, but you know, I mean, it was traditionally used in cooking by the physicians to the Kings because it was medicinal, right? It's medicinal foods and these herbs and spices all have a medicinal effect. And we've forgotten about that in modern Western medicine. So bringing that back in to our lives just adds ah, spice of life. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> well done. I like the Thank you. phrase. It's like menu pause, right? <laughs> menu pause. I like it. Love so, that. um, is a, yeah, yeah, definitely hold up the book. Let us see it for the people that are there. It is there. It is. It's and so you might cute, right? opening, yeah, it's great. Uh, and opening it and showing like the, the beautiful images and how, you know, you're also very descriptive. Yeah. It's oh, like a yeah. self manual. So, Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That's yummy. Isn't that beautiful. That that's gorgeous. Each, each plan has, um, you know, there's five different plans, each pausing something that probably no longer serves us. And it's not designed to be restrictive. It's designed to be nourishing and you're not going to be hungry. Even I, I put my uh, girlfriend and doctor club group through the toughest plan, which mm -hmm. is the cleanse plan in here. And they're like, I don't feel deprived at all. I feel good. I'm not hungry. I'm not having cravings. And that is by design. You know, right. the, right. uh, my friend JJ Virgin says your body is a chemistry lab, not a bank account. So <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, you know, it makes me kind of feel like, you know, there's like this diet kind of perspective for menopause, right? Um, because you kind of go through these things about like, you know, how your body is different now for carbs and, you know, alkalizing and alkalizing and, you know, uh, some intermittent fasting, which starts sounding like there's one diet for menopause or does it need to be individualized? How it does really does become individualized. There's the foundational, which is, I call it my keto green approach. So that because of research looked at um, women who intermittent fast, and if they have at least 12.5 hours between dinner and breakfast, they had a significantly reduced risk of recurrent breast cancer. So that is built in to my plan. So that's number one, we want to keep at least 13 to 16 hours uh, between dinner and breakfast. And the earlier we eat, the better. So there's that. And avoiding sugar, breaking up with sugar, because it is toxic to our systems. We no longer need it. So that's another, another big piece. And then 
having fats for hormones. So keto green approach is foundational, but in my plan, I've also done a keto green extreme, which follows an autoimmune protocol. So sometimes if you have MS or Hashimoto's or other autoimmune disease, even, you know, psoriasis or eczema, skin conditions, you want to pause some of those healthy, but otherwise inflammatory foods like nightshades and peppers. And so eliminated that in keto green extreme. And sometimes we need to pause meat and be plant-based. We can do it for six days. My fellow meat lovers out there, we can absolutely do that for six days. And it's really good for your gut microbiome. So it helps with hormone balancing. And each time you learn something different about your body, I feel better this way. Or when I eat this, I'm not feeling as well as I did when I did this plan. And so there's a little switch. It's kind of like, you know, if we do the same thing every day, the same exercise every day, we hit a stall, we'll stop seeing progress. If we're eating the same food every day, we hit a stall. And I'll just do a really big shout out to you chicken salad eaters out there. No more chicken salad. <laughs> you know, I have to have always have clients and they're like, oh, I have a chicken salad every day for lunch. I'm like no more chicken salad. <laughs> You are cut off. <laughs> you are cut off. No more. <laughs> your book's going to show them lots of yummy alternatives though, right? So Lots of yummy. I mean, yeah, you can have the chicken salad just once in a long while. So right. there's a lot of diversity, food diversity is really good for our gut. Yeah. And that's good for our hormones because the gut microbiome, we have the estrobilome, how we detoxify estrogen. So estrogen itself is not bad how we detoxify it, how we metabolize it, what are things in our environment that disrupt our ability to eliminate it in a clean, healthy way, that's key. And so that is, that is built into each and every one of the plans. I love that. Um, can you share with us maybe a couple of stories? Um, you know, maybe one or two, yes. maybe a little example of Yes. And I'd love to actually this mother daughter duo have been in my keto green community and my girlfriend, Dr. Club for um, a couple of the mom's been in my club for five years. She's been in my groups. And then her daughter came on two years ago and started following what her mother did because she saw her mom's health. So her mom in her sixties struggling with energy, weight, fatigue, brain fog, grumpy. And so she came on board and started following my uh, magic menopause program followed. We were with together with eight weeks and she just kept, kept on doing it. And in her story, she's lost, I don't know, maybe 65 pounds, something like that. But more importantly, she gained her sexy back. She walks on the beach every day. She was funner to be around. And her daughter's like, I'm going to do what you're doing. And so her daughter came on board and started doing what her mom was doing. You know, we supplement too with some, my keto green shakes and mighty maca. So she became, you know, addicted to those we say, but really it was the keto green lifestyle, making it easy. She's a busy teacher and making it easy and incorporating it into her life. And the story between the two of them, I mean, they are champions. If you ever come to my Keto Green community on Facebook, you'll see Chelsea and Jeannie, they are cheerleaders for everyone else out there because what a transformation they made. And I say this story because there are many, there are thousands more, but these, you know, if, when we take care of ourselves as a mama, then, then our children, will be better taken care of. We come from a different place when our energy is more magnetic and positive and high vibration than we do when we're exhausted and trying to do for every piece of us is, is somewhere else, right? And we're scattered. I mean, I say this from a place I've been there, right? Until I took care of myself, my girls were scattered energy too. And now they're all, you know, it's just that difference. Just see it. I guarantee it makes a difference. So I know we're busy, especially as moms and working moms or, you know, whatever we're doing in our life, we're taking care of our significant other or boyfriend or whatever it may be. We want to take care of ourselves first. And that creates this better health all the way around us. Everyone around us gets better. When you see this generational effect, it's just, it's inspiring. I love that. And it's, it's amazing how we do travel in our parents' footprints, even sometimes you don't mean to, right. You just do. And if you're, if they're teaching us as this, you know, mom is like how to care for ourselves, our, 
our, our, our children will do the same thing, right? They'll do the same thing. How beautiful. I love that. Thanks. Dr. Give them permission. You give them permission. Yes. Yes. I love that. Thank you so much. Really valuable insights. Uh, Dr. Quebecca can be found at www.dranna.com. It's D-R-A-N-N-A.com. Let me remind you to subscribe and get access to all humanized videos, podcasts, and transcriptions from all of our thought leaders like Dr. Anna on personalized health at humanizehealth.com. Thanks so much for being with us.